This Week in Gaming, Nick Rowley, formerly of 2K, is now president of 505 Games. Several titles have been inducted into the Video Game Hall of Fame. Facebook has killed the Oculus Story Studio. Admit it, I scared you. Sony's E3 conference will be on June 12th, and Old Man's Journey now has a release date of May 18th, 2017. This is 1RBC Gaming Weekly. First off, regarding the shutdown of the Oculus Story Studio, Facebook announced on Thursday that the studio responsible for the Emmy-nominated VR short Henry, this same studio that's also responsible for the Quill VR art software and more, would be shut down. This is disappointing but not entirely surprising. The movies from this VR film studio haven't been setting the charts on fire. In a blog post at Oculus.com, Jason Rubin says that the company is now entering the next chapter of VR development, where new creators enter the market in anticipation of adoption and growth, and we've been looking at the best way to allocate our resources to create an impact on the ecosystem. Translation? The Oculus Story Studios creations were supposed to be a gateway into VR, but they didn't really do enough to entice new developers and creators to make VR content, and it didn't pull in a tangible number of new users. However, this does not mean that Oculus is completely changing gears. According to that same blog post, they are allocating $50 million towards experiential, non-gaming VR content. So we'll have to stay tuned to see what's coming next for Oculus and their content production. That said, there's a long road to go for widespread VR adoption, or even recognition. According to a report by Forrester Research, only 42% of U.S. adults surveyed had even heard of virtual reality. For a paradigm-shifting technology, that's less than stellar. Perhaps Oculus, and by that token Facebook, should have focused less on building walled gardens to drag people into a hardware and software ecosystem and focused more on making the VR market viable in the first place by focusing on building up a community. Trying to lock games to hardware with exclusives has, predictably, proved counterproductive. What do you think? Is Facebook making the right decision by shutting down the OSS? Hit us up on Twitter at OneRuleBeCool and let us know. In somewhat happier news, this week a few changes came to Steam's game gifting system. It is now easier to schedule a gift delivery for a specific time, and if a gift is declined, you'll get a refund right away. Previously, the game would just be returned to your Steam inventory. Finally, if you'd like to give a game away to a friend in another country, the game is now guaranteed to work. However, if there's a large pricing disparity between the countries of the gift buyer and receiver, it won't be possible to send the gift. That said, Steam will now warn you of this before you buy the gift. I'm not sure how I feel about that last thing. On the one hand, I suppose it makes sense. Imagine how much money you could make if you lived in a country where people have lower incomes and game companies price for games respectively. You could definitely make profit by selling Steam games for a little more than they cost in your region, but less than they cost in richer ones. On the other hand, maybe you're an American and your bestie lives in Australia, which gets gouged pretty hard when it comes to digital goods. Imagine being frustrated by not being able to buy your Australian friend a game because of potential fraud. That's pretty awful. Are you excited by the changes to Steam's gift-giving system? Let us know what you think on Twitter at OneRuleBeCool. The National Museum of Play's Video Game Hall of Fame has inducted several titles this week. They are Donkey Kong, Halo Combat Evolved, Pokemon Red and Green, and Street Fighter II. These games beat out several others that were in the running, including Final Fantasy VII, Tomb Raider, Myst, and Wii Sports. In case you haven't heard of it, the National Museum of Play is part of the Strong Museum in Rochester, New York. There they honor anything relating to play. For their Video Game Hall of Fame, they seek to recognize games that have had a lasting influence on the game industry and popular culture. Some of the previous inductees include The Legend of Zelda, Tetris, and Pong. I have not been to the museum before, but now I suppose I have a good excuse to make the journey. In case you're wondering why these games somehow managed to beat Final Fantasy and Myst, it's worth bearing in mind that the games aren't just measured by how good they were, or on what sort of impact they had on the game industry, but also on what sort of impact they had on culture at large. 
While Myst, for example, is an extremely important part of adventure game history, it didn't quite have the pop culture impact that Halo has, for instance. While Wii Sports was one of the best-selling games of all time, and a whole lot of people wound up playing it, people don't quite reference it the way that they do Donkey Kong. Folks will say it's on like Donkey Kong, but does anybody quite say, well, those shorts are so Wii Sports? Does anybody say, see you later, alligator? Steal some gems, Tomb Raider? Uh, my favorite character just got airift? Anyway, enough of my rambling. What do you think about B's latest inductees? Hit us up on Twitter at OneRuleBeCool with your thoughts. Activision Blizzard released their financial report for Q1 2017. It doesn't really have very many big shockers. Less people are playing Call of Duty than last year, as Activision predicted. While Infinite Warfare was popular, it was just as popular as Activision thought it would be. Though they do expect activity to kick up again for their hotly anticipated World War II game that's coming out in November. Meanwhile, King, the Activision-owned company behind Candy Crush, is still seeing mad profits, which are in a state of decline, but still leaves King on top of the US mobile app store charts. Probably the most exciting numbers from the report, however, relate to Overwatch, which continues to be Blizzard's fastest growing franchise. In quarter one of this year alone, it became their eighth billion dollar franchise. Besides being extremely profitable, it also has a lot of player engagement. In a market that's flooded with free-to-play multiplayer action titles, that something like Overwatch can see such massive success is really a testament to the game's fantastic design, tremendous replayability, and the magic of a multi-jillion dollar advertising budget. Keep in mind, Overwatch doesn't do a whole lot of new stuff. It treads plenty of ground that TF2 has tread before it. However, what makes Overwatch work so well is that it takes these elements from other games and combines them into an incredibly polished package. One that's kept people coming back and dropping money. In game releases this week, World to the West came to Windows, Mac, Linux, PS4, and Xbox One. Developed by Rain Games, the studio behind Teslagrad, this ARPG is set in the same world as their previous game. It's sort of steampunk, but a little more fantastical than usual. Now, in this game, you get to play as four different characters, each with unique abilities, and you've teamed up to save the world. Thus far, the game's received generally positive reception from players and the press, drawing praise for its puzzles and overall design, which draws quite a bit on the older Legend of Zelda games. Its aesthetic, meanwhile, is inspired by old European adventure comics. Think Tintin. World to the West will be coming to the Wii U at a later date. If you're too cheap to buy Overwatch and you're also a console gamer, I have great news for you. Paladins was released on the Xbox One and PS4 this week. The game is currently in open beta and it faced a ton of criticism for its similarities to Overwatch when it was released on PC a while back. Sure, it's a multiplayer action game that has a lot in common with Blizzard's Juggernaut FPS, but then again, Blizzard's Juggernaut FPS Overwatch has a lot in common with a lot of games. Also, Paladins has plenty of its own mechanics going for it in spite of the similarities. Having tried it myself, I don't think that it's a lame ripoff of Overwatch, but it definitely has something unique going for it. Though, I feel like I have to play more of the game before I'm really at liberty to say just what that is. That said, Paladins is free to play on all platforms, so you're not going to lose anything if you decide to just try it out. At long last, Tumbleseed has been released. The game's a roguelike in which you play as a seed, rolling around through its environment and rising to the top of a mountain, all while avoiding obstacles and enemies. Now, this game's deceptively difficult. Its cute style belies a massive challenge, as many of the game's players will attest to. Interestingly enough, Tumbleseed was actually inspired by an 80s arcade game called Ice Cold Beer. Now, Ice Cold Beer is not actually a video game, 
but one of the old-fashioned arcade games that actually uses physical pieces. In Ice Cold Beer, you had to balance a marble on a platform in order to bring it as high as you possibly could inside the arcade cabinet. Tumbleseed builds on this tremendously. Thus far, Tumbleseed has received fantastic reviews from both players and the press. It's available for Mac, Windows, PS4, and the Nintendo Switch. If you're fond of visual novels, you may want to take a look at Lily of the Valley, which was released on Steam this week for Mac, Windows, and Linux. In this game, you play as a young man who's just lost his mother. In the wake of his loss, he goes back home to Wales where he meets a mysterious girl who knew his mother, the titular Lily. This game was originally released a couple years ago, albeit in rougher form. This version of the game features improved art and writing with a whole lot more polish, and while I haven't heard a lot about this version of the game, the original made some waves when it was released, so you may want to check this out. A Kickstarter project that captured our attention this week is for a VR headset, the X-Chimp. Currently in development by Austrian company Sunnybag, a company responsible for the SunnyTab and other solar-powered accessories, the X-Chimp is meant to be more of a high-end mobile VR system along the lines of the Samsung Gear VR. I'll be honest, I find the X-Chimp's premise to be a little unusual. It's supposed to be a more affordable VR system than some of the other options on the market, so let's say you can't afford an Oculus Rift or an HTC Vive, you can get one of these instead. What I don't get, however, is why it's an Android device instead of an HMD for your PC. The X-Chimp's display is 2560 by 1440. Compare that to the HTC Vive, which is 2160 by 1200. Most of the VR games for Android just aren't on that level quite yet. That said, I can see the advantage of such a high-res display for video applications, such as 360-degree video, which has real potential to take off in spite of Facebook's killing off Oculus Story Studio this week. XChimp does make some clever strides regarding mobile VR. For instance, you don't actually need a cell phone to use the system. Instead, the guts of the system are all stored in the controller, which keeps the HMD light and cool. I do feel that there is some missed potential in the way that they're pushing it as a lower cost alternative to the Vive or Oculus, because while it is an all-in-one system, you can't plug it into your PC for use with VR games there. The market for VR games on mobile and the market for VR games on PC, while there is some crossover, these are different markets we're talking about. The sort of games that are being produced for mobile VR systems are different from those being produced for PC VR, because the audiences are different in those places. Unless developers start making more high-end mobile VR games, not a whole lot of games are going to wind up taking advantage of the hardware of the XChimp when it finally comes out. The cost for the headset ranges from $250 to $300 on Kickstarter, depending on how early you get in. Frankly, while I'm not sure just who this headset is meant for, it's clear that there is a demand, as the developers hit their goal for it in about four hours. If you're contemplating grabbing one, you should probably go for it. Sunnybag as a company has quite a bit of experience with Kickstarters and shipping hardware. I backed one of their mobile solar batteries and was quite pleased with the results. In fact, I lugged it around with me at PAX East this year. It came in handy when I needed to plug in my cell phone and there weren't any outlets nearby. Getting back on topic, will you be kickstarting the x -Gym? Are you already doing so, and if so, what do you plan on doing with it? Hit us up on Twitter at OneRuleBeCool and let us know.
and sign up to be an early bird on Kickstarter.com. XChimp, your guide for a new experience. Another crowdfunding project that caught our eye is Kinseed, a sandbox ARPG that's currently being produced by some former Lionhead developers. These are the folks who worked on Fable. Now, this game is sort of in the same vein as Stardew Valley. You'll be farming, raising a family, going on adventures. However, as time passes in the game, your character will grow old and eventually die. When this happens, you get to play as that character's child. What you did during your lifetime as your first character affects the life of the next character and future generations moving forward. Now, if you'd like to try the game, there's a prototype available from its Kickstarter page. The game looks very well thought out. It's got plenty of lore, a day-night system. Overall, it seems quite ambitious. The development team is planning on releasing Kinseed late in 2018 for Windows. Finally, we leave you with a teaser trailer for Product Line Alpha, a car factory design simulator in development by Positech Games. This game is going into early access on Steam on May 18, 2017 for Windows. Just a heads up, there won't be an episode of 1RBC Gaming Weekly next week. I know, breaking the name. We're still hard at work developing other games can learn from in time for the summer. That said, keep an eye on OneRuleBeCool.com as we've got fresh editorial coming in. That's it for this week's game news. For all the greatest game news, reviews, previews, and interviews, follow at OneRuleBeCool on Twitter and Instagram. Be sure to follow me at Jordan underscore Cameron for my own views.